Hello, I'm Mark Carrico from Kingman Academy Defense, and today we're going to be talking about the VB Gymnasium Sabre V2, and that is from WoodenSwords.com, Purple Heart, uh, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so, uh, starting with the stats for it overall, it is a 37.25 inch uh, overall length. <clears throat> So it's relatively short compared to some other sabers on the market, but it's still a good length. That is, of course, including the blunt tip, since some organizations re uh, require that. It does come with a rolled tip underneath that is adequate for most case uses, but to cover all basis, I put the rubber tip on there anyway. The blade length is 31.75 inches, and again, that's including the rubber tip. The grip length, the grip uh, portion that you're actually holding, so not including the guard or the pommel cap, is going to be 4.75 on this one in particular. <clears throat> and the balance point is going to be about five and a half inches in front of the guard. And the overall weight is one pound, 10 ounces, or 10.5 ounces. So <clears throat> my first impressions pulling out of the box a year ago now were that has, it feels good in the hand, it moves good. It took a little bit of adjusting, getting used to it versus uh, rapiers or single sticks or other training uh, devices for the Sabre. Um, but the thing I noticed right off the bat was the grip was too thin for me, so I, go, I went ahead and put a twine wrap over that, coated in beeswax, um, and now I think the grip is pretty much right where I want it. Um, so bear that in mind. It is good that it comes with a smaller grip uh, for those of you who have smaller hands, but for those of you who have medium or large size hands, you might want to do something to fix that. It was a fairly good um, leather wrap grip. I believe it's some kind of chrome tan. It has that uh, modern sword replica kind of finish to it, but it was a good grip if you like that. Um, but for me personally, I wanted something a little bit bigger. So I just wrapped in some twine, no big deal. Um, another thing to note inside the guard is this nice thick leather stop. Um, it's good if you practice with your thumb up and on thrust your hand gives a little bit. You're not going to jam your thumb and uh, index finger knuckle into a metal sheet. Now the guard, you notice that I did something a little bit different. I painted the outside black when you receive it. The inside has a black coating on it as well. It's uh, some kind of semi-gloss, uh, I would guess lacquer, something along those lines. <clears throat> but I went ahead and sprayed the outside because after a year of use, it had developed some rust, which is my fault for not adequately oiling it, of course. But uh, I went ahead and sprayed it black uh, with some spray paint, not a big deal. Um, if you care for it, it is a nice steel, um, and this steel in particular is heat treated, um, and it is very sturdy. It's not like some other companies out there who are using a um, mild steel or at least a softer steel for their guards. This one can take quite a bit of abuse. Um, the pommel cap, nothing special. I believe it's a... Uh, uh, stainless steel, something of that nature. Um, it hasn't taken any rust, unlike the uh, the blade, which I've had to clean several times, uh, which obviously it's a training weapon, you're going to have to clean it. Um, but it hasn't developed any kind of rust inside or out, so I'm guessing it's some kind of stainless steel, or at least it's plated. <clears throat> that being said, the um, attachment here is a uh, it's essentially what's known as a Chicago screw or sex bolt, whatever you want to call it, um, depending on where you're from. I imagine that there are different names for it, but it is a headed bolt, essentially. Um, so it's about 
half an inch long and sockets over the tang, which is threaded to M6, I believe. Um, and it comes with a wrench to tighten it down, which is fantastic. I like that a lot better than the Allen key fixtures that a lot of swords are using nowadays um, because those can strip very easily. And if these, if this one strips, you're still gonna have quite a bit of material to hold, uh, grip onto it. Um, and worst case scenario, it's gonna be easier for a screw extractor. Um, and if it really gets locked on there, you can cut that off, go down to most hardware stores and get a replacement for it. Now moving on to the blade, um, actually one more thing on the, um, on the grip, it is not a huge grip, right? So um, if anyone out there is familiar with the Kvitans, this it does have a smaller uh, coverage for your hand. Uh, however, with some little finagling, these are my lacrosse gloves, which I feel adds a fair bit of protection for Saber. It does fit in there quite nicely. The Red Dragons do have a, a larger knuckle plate, so those might not fit as nicely. But with the glove on, it works really well. Um, no real impeded movement. Uh, if you have the thumb caps on there or a, uh, a lot of protection on your thumb, you might find it a little bit difficult to get the thumb up behind uh, because of the curvature. However, once it's in there, um, there's plenty of room to have your thumb up and present point. Another pair of gloves, um, obviously your leather gloves are gonna work just fine, um, but another pair of gloves that are gaining some traction, especially with broad sorters, are the Age of Craft Visby gauntlets. And for those of you who don't know, these are steel gauntlets um, with leather, leather covering and leather inside. Uh, these ones, since there is the steel knuckle plate, um, it does feel a lot tighter. Uh, than the lacrosse gloves, but it's still nothing you can't deal with and throw some nice cuts with. Um, I do notice that uh, because of the angle I'm at here, it is more comfortable to grip in a hammer grip rather than with the thumb up, so that is something to keep in mind as well. Although your hand size, that might vary. So the blade next, now, like I said earlier, if you're comparing it to one of the Kavitans or um, various uh, other versions, this might fall a little shorter. Um, I know uh, one of my friends out in California has the Kavitan and when we sparred, it was about two inch, an inch or two shorter, but Really, that's not much, um, although it is something to keep in mind if, if you're really looking at uh, lengths of swords and wanting to maximize uh, for what you're doing. Also, um, for someone uh, my height or taller, it does begin to feel like a very short sword. Um, not saying that's historically inaccurate for gymnasium sabers or it's not beneficial but that is something to keep in mind if you're on the taller end, I'm six foot. Uh, if you're on the taller end of things, this might feel like a short sword for you. Um, so that is something to think about. <clears throat> um, but the blade construction is very good. Um, I have gotten some little dings on the blade, not much. Um, I think it was uh, when I was sparring against a, a long sword or a fetter with it. So um, it has taken some dings, but overall it's, it's held up pretty well. Um, not much to say about it. It's got a nice rounded um, edge. The back is relatively squared off. So if you are doing a lot of reverse edge cuts and you're hitting higher up, that is something you might want to round off. Although um, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. And it does, the squared off section does continue all the way up to the point. So that's gonna be up to you. Um, 
has two nice fullers running the length of it, gives it a nice rigidity. Now, these are a lot stiffer than the Kvitans, uh, which is good in the bind, but maybe not so nice to your opponent. So that's something to keep in mind. As far as the SCA goes, it does just barely pass for cut and thrust. It is a very stiff blade. So if you're um, looking into something for the SCA, that might be something to consider. Um, some marshals might not allow it on the field. However, if you're in a Sabre tournament or running a Sabre class or in a Sabre class, it should be fine. It's, um, like I said, it is stiffer than your uh, Kvitan, but it isn't, um, I don't feel that it's unsafe. Uh, in my personal opinion, but your mileage may vary. So um, overall, it's it's a very good weight. Um, it's an adequate length. Um, it feels very nimble in the hand. Um, it's uh, it's a good sword for the price. Um, when I purchased this, it was discounted um, because of the club I'm a part of and. It came in at about 2.30, I believe. It was a year ago when I ordered it, so I might be wrong on that. But the best part for me was that it was at my door in about three days. So, <clears throat> now, obviously shipping times might vary, but it's, a, it's very nice that if you're starting a Sabre class, and especially now as schools are starting to reopen, if you're starting a Sabre class, um, and you need a saber right away, uh, or you need a bunch of sabers if you're running a school right away, it's a great option. You don't have to wait the three or four months to come from Europe or things like that. Um, and they stock them, at least when I ordered mine, it was in stock, and so it shipped really quickly. So that is, I think, all I want to say about this today. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and go ahead and like and subscribe for more content. Uh, we're going to have more Sabre reviews, and eventually we're going to have technique videos and things like that. So stay tuned for that. Thank you.